everybody, welcome to number 27. I'm Jack, and this is a Mark, the infamous Golf Mark III GTI. Now, many people don't realize that in the 50s and 60s, Volkswagen was really a bit of a basket case. It was one of the least performing of the European manufacturers. It's hard to think about that today because the company is such a behemoth, but Back in the day, they were relying on the Beetle and the Transporter, which they made in various versions for years and years. Really wasn't doing that well. Then in 74, it launched the Golf. That changed everything. Not only did it mean that Volkswagen started selling a lot more cars, but it also changed the perception of the company from something that made quite old hat products into something that made a very chic, very well made, very good car. The GTI versions and the halo effect that they produced was a big part of that success and everything was going really well until the Mark III was launched, this very car. Now it's got a terrible reputation, but let's look a little bit more at the history of it and then look at today, what it's actually like to drive. So let's start off with the biggest criticism of all, and that is that it was slow. This one, the eight valve, had the same version as the Mark II eight valve, so it's 113 horsepower, which even for the time really doesn't sound like very much. You know what, I think get into one of these with the expectations that you have and you'd be pleasantly surprised. It's actually a responsive little engine and it is good in terms of low down torque and mid range. It does get buzzy higher up. It doesn't feel like an out and out performance engine maybe, but plenty enough to have fun with. Really not too bad. So on paper, the Mark III had everything that you would need from a GTI. It's quite a tidy looking design, definitely a bit better than the sort of more, even more bloated Mark IV. Then it has the body kit, the various sort of accoutrements, alloy wheels, slightly lowered. And in the interior, you have the sports seats, the lovely gear knob that echoes the first Golf GTIs with the Golf Ball there. But the way it drove did leave some questions. This weighed 150 kilograms more than the outgoing previous Golf. So, you know, we're talking about a lot of extra weight. When these were first reviewed, they complained that they just, not only were they way too slow, and to be fair, 0 to 60, 9.6 seconds, when you're driving, it doesn't come across like that. But anyway, because of that extra weight, not only did it mean that the car wasn't as quick as some had hoped, but also, were they right about the handling? Well, it definitely feels soft over the bumps, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And it doesn't seem to lean massively. It is a bit softer than you would expect of a GTI. And I think the problem is, on this little switchback, you can see it, you throw it in, it's not very positive of steering, but it does handle tidily enough. You can still have a bit of fun with it. I think the problem is though, that when you compare it to what else was out there at the time, so for example, the 306, uh, at the time it would have been the XSI initially, which was slightly flawed because it had a buzzy engine, but then the GTI 6, which I myself own, and that is a completely different experience to driving this Golf. But in essence, I think that what has happened is that Volkswagen started to trade a bit too heavily on their reputation. The halo effect of the GTI badge was so strong and the reputation that the, the Golf had for being a quality car and maybe more grown up than the other hatches, that they decided for this generation and for the Mark IV, they didn't need to make cars which had a sort of, you know, which had a bit of an edge to them when you were driving them. They thought that the quality 
all the other things that made the Golf such a good car were enough. Now they did make a 16 valve version of this car which addressed some of the issues, i.e. that it was too slow. But if you're looking at the chassis driver feel, it still fell behind in comparison to its other competitors. When you're looking at the Mark III today though, does it deserve its reputation? I think as a classic, it's actually a very likeable car. It's much better built still. It does feel when you shut the doors, the interior, you know, everything, all the surfaces that you're touching, the switches, does feel a, a league above its competitors. If you think, for example, a Fiat Tipo would have been a car that would have run alongside this, you can see why they still manage to sell very, very well. Now, dynamically, the chassis may not be the best, but there are still a couple of bits from the Mark III which are nice. The steering, although perhaps not the fastest, is still pretty communicative. And the gear change is nice. It's got a nice slick mechanical feel. Indeed, I remember that from the Mark II, one of the things that I owned one for a while, one of the things that most people did as an upgrade is to take the linkage mechanism from this car and put it on the Mark II. And the way it was improved, which is quite telling, is that it had literally a lump of lead around it to make it heavier. And I've really enjoyed driving it. I think that because its limits are so low, grip isn't massive, it does move around a lot. It's a car that you can get, you know, you feel like you're, you're pushing rather than the car pushing your own limits. So on these little corners here, nice and flowing. You drop it in, there's a bit more lean than you would like initially, then it settles through. But it's telling you what it's doing. I think if you were really, really pushing it, it would lose a little bit to some of the more accomplished rivals for sure, but you can still have fun with this. And it definitely doesn't feel under-engined, not at these speeds on these roads. So to sum up, the Mark III I think was a bit of a mistake by Volkswagen in some ways, but it is still a really good car and especially today, if you want a usable everyday classic, this is really a cracker. There is a little bit of an issue and that is that this used to be the cheapest way into GTI ownership, but I was looking at prices uh, yesterday and I don't think that is any longer the case. The Mark IV there was an eight valve version, which was a real, real damp squid. Uh, and I think that used to be the only one that approached the prices of this, but it now looks like you can get the turbo versions of the Mark IV GTI, the 1.8T, for the same price as the eight valve versions of this. And that does change the parameters a little bit because it makes that choice a little bit harder. I do think though, perhaps, that the Mark III is a little bit more likeable. It's just still got enough hint of the sort of 80s, 90s hatches. Thank you very much to Mark for bringing this lovely Golf down today. I've really enjoyed driving this. If you want me to do a video on one of your own cars, then please get in touch with me here. And if you like the look of what YouTube is suggesting, do please watch another one of my videos. Thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you for the next one.